Welcome to Everyday Greatness, and thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Barnaby Howarth. You may have noticed a slightly different introduction to the series this year. This is because we're coming to you as a panel discussion series, co-produced with Stronger Than My Excuses. We're coming to you from West Tigers Center of Excellence. And I want to start by thanking the entire team at the Tigers for having us in your tremendous venue. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet, the Wongal people of the Darug Nation. I love being Australian, so I want to thank our Indigenous brothers and sisters for, walk, for walking hand in hand to make this a better country. I can't wait to tell you about the upcoming season. The theme of this series of Everyday Greatness is winning fairly in business, sport and life. And we have some incredible guests who we'll get to in just a second. Many of these people you'll know as they're legends of sport and the sporting industry. We look forward to this new format of the show as a panel discussion series. I'll be asking our panels why they think winning fairly is important, the outcomes people can expect if they win fairly themselves, and the actions they can take to be good people in business, sport and life. Before we officially kick things off, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors for this series, whose logos you'll see across your screens at various times. I'd especially like to thank the major sponsor of every series of Everyday Greatness, the ARA Group. We'll have some more about ARA at the end of this episode. I'd also like to thank the crew at Look Studio Australia for your technical expertise and your recording work. Right, now let's get this show on the road. Our panel today will be talking about winning fairly in business. And I'd like to introduce our esteemed guests. Firstly, we have Alex Opacic from Athlete to Business, Steve Tolan from Pinpoint Talent, and Sean Millicamp, General Manager of Community Foundation and Affiliates at the West Tigers and the former CEO of the Central Coast Mariners. Thank you all and thank you. Welcome to Everyday Greatness. Thank you. Cheers, thank man. you. We're here to talk about winning fairly in business. We want to get deep straight away and ask our panelists why. Anyone can say they're a fair business person and that statement is hard to challenge because being fair is a tough thing to measure. So in a cutthroat business world where nothing gets approved unless there's a compelling cost benefit analysis, is being fair even necessary anymore? Or is it just getting in the way of being more productive and making more money? Let's hear from Sean on this first. Sean, as a leader in the business side of sports clubs, your job security is dictated by win-loss records. Is it hard to push people to try to win fairly when a lot of people would probably say to you, why would I bother? Not many other people are trying. Yeah, it's a great question and, uh, and, and, and thanks for having me on. The the fundamental part of being a being a sports organisation is a uh, is a real challenge because sport and business actually don't don't really connect. If you, as a, a sports administrator, focus too much on the sport itself, you generally end up going broke, you know, and you generally lose fans and disengage uh, with your community. If you focus too much on the business side of things, often your performance on field uh, uh, won't uh, won't survive. So, getting that balance is almost an art form than a science at times. So. So for working in sport, um, managing that, that conflict and that balance between what is the right thing for the sport, the athletes uh, winning on the field, the right thing for your community, your members, your sponsors, and the club brand and identity, getting that balance right is, is, is a real key. And, uh, and so, so the reason why is, um, is fundamentally at the, at the core of it. With any organization, if, if your employees feel valued, they feel like the company they're working for stands for something and is really making a difference, then they're going to perform better. And so in sport, being able to deliver that, being able to have a club culture and an ethos that encompasses everybody, whether you're working at reception, whether you're cleaning the sheds, or whether you're taking the first hit up for the West Tigers, yeah, that cohesiveness is actually so important in being able to deliver a long-term strategy that will not only benefit the P&L and the strategies of the club, but also make sure you take everybody uh, with you for the ride. It's no surprise at all you're so bloody successful in the sports business world. Now, let's turn to Steve Toland to answer this question. I'm looking forward to this answer. 
Steve, uh, as somebody who takes pride in old school values and tries to set a good example and be a good role model for other people, how do you impress on the younger generation the importance of those things that are so intangible and immeasurable in business? Mate, it's, uh, it, it is a great question and um, tough, tough ask to follow to go after Sean, but uh, we discussed a little bit earlier the example that I gave before. I, I watched that you know, infamous video of Sean, nine year kind of celebration at the Central Coast when he was there getting applauded by the people. You can't buy that kind of affection, right? So that is old school values, the way you make people feel. Recruitment is a people business first and foremost, right? You know, it's very different to sport, but it's still results led. So, you know, I always have this very working class term where I say to the team, we're, we're dealing with people, not cans of beans. And they look at me and go, geez, there's your age. <laughs> but it's true, people have feelings, commitments. You know, we've had a very turbulent year in the economy. Um, a lot of people looking for work, senior people looking for work. So people can see those that go the extra mile and the key word is care. They can tell who genuinely cares. You know, we're very big, similar to sport, on feedback from candidates and clients alike. So that's why if you want to be successful, you really have to go further than numbers and kind of activities. It's about actually caring. So that's what we really impress on the team. Very good. Now let's turn to Alex Opacic, a former elite basketballer himself. Alex, is it easier or harder to operate with integrity in business when you have so much time to ponder decisions and be more cutthroat and measurable? It's a really good question. And again, Barnaby, thank you for having me on. Um, look, personally, from my experience, I'm finding it tougher to, to try and, you know, as both Sean and Steve mentioned, I think the most challenging thing I'm finding in business is balancing that being really fair, genuine care for your customers with making money as well. So as an example, like Steve, I work in the recruitment space as well. And I want to be as caring, as genuine uh, as much as possible with the candidates that I work with. But sometimes you can't cater to everybody. I can't be uh, fully present and caring to every single candidate that I speak with because I need to also make money. So I think balancing with being, you know, as, as Steve was saying, it's a results driven business. So my challenge in business is focusing on generating revenue and money, but being caring and, and genuine with everybody as well at the same time. If I focus too much on this end, I might not have time to make money. But if I focus too much on that end over here making money, I come off as not caring and not genuine. So I think it's, it's bridging that gap. That's the challenge. And look, I'm doing my best to, to do that. You're doing it bloody well. Yeah. Um, so what I get from your comments and Sean's comments is that money seems to be the problem, seems to be getting everybody's way. <laughs> Why don't we all just stop trying to earn money and we'll be fine. <laughs> now, let me add my two cents to this topic. I'd like to add a quote from Ed Federman, who's the managing director of the ARA Group. I asked Ed Federman about this very topic and he said, one of the most important things for any business is to contribute to and give back to the community in which you live and work. And I think that basically sums up what everybody's just spoken about. It's so important to make money, as you said, but it's so important to care about the people around you at the same time. Now let's move on to the second topic. More and more consumers want to deal with companies and businesses that can demonstrate their own corporate social responsibility plans and ethics to look after their people and planet. So what do the customers want from all of you blokes? How do you measure values-based things like integrity, respect, and kindness? Let's hear from Steve first on this. How do you guys do it at Pinpoint Talent? We've only got two minutes, but this is a great question. Um, so thank you. You can measure its results, and I kind of work backwards, right? So as Alex said, financial performance. Um, in our business, we have two sides of the coin, two customers, candidates and clients. So what I've focused on since we came into Pinpoint is, well, believe it or not, let me go back a step. There is 16 teams in the NRL. There's 10 to 12,000 recruitment businesses. Let me repeat that, 10 to 12,000 recruitment businesses. Uh, automation, AI, all these different things coming in. The feedback that we get from both clients and customers alike is don't sell to us, be honest, be open, again, care, empathy, and it's results led. So this is the key thing. So even since I kind of came into the role, the things that I impressed on the team were go out and have face-to-face -face interactions, meaningful conversations, get to know your customer, You know why are you looking for this kind of position? So. I would argue that you can actually measure it because the success or the successful people in recruitment tend to be the ones that don't clock on, clock off. They tend to go the extra mile, they do things properly and they build trust. So again, I'd probably argue that you can actually measure it and it is kind of results led. Old school, love it. 
And Alex, what about you? You're, you're running your business on your own these days. Mm-hmm. How do you measure those values-based things like integrity, trust, respect? Coincidentally, those are three of the values within my business as well that I've set for myself. But I try and be aware of it. Just be aware of what I'm doing day to day when I'm interacting with candidates and clients as well. But to give a more specific example, when I worked for a company, one of the best companies I I worked for, which is Southern Cross Stereo, actually, it's kind of where I I started my uh, career in the corporate world after basketball. I'm so grateful for that experience. But what they did was they rewarded good behavior, being fair, values. So we had a monthly... Uh, catch up with the whole team in in the business and the the managers were just aware when somebody went the extra mile for a teammate or for for a colleague for a client and at the end of the month they would they would make everybody aware of what that person's done publicly and reward them with some sort of reward you know it could be a voucher it could be you know take your wife or husband out to the movies or whatnot but just making people aware of that person did xyz to be fair to be kind to be adhering to our values Very cool. And Sean, your job at the Tigers is to get community involvement, which is really intangible and really, some people would say fluffy. How do you justify your decisions based on the on-field results of the Tigers? Do they align? Uh, Absolutely. The interesting thing uh, for me is uh, my role at West Tigers is all about community and school programs and and that connection and to win football games. So how does one connect with the other is, is really integral. And we're talking about profit and making money before. Uh, it's not a dirty word if you explain where that profit is going mm. and what the benefits are. Everybody will get behind something if they know it's got some really good outcomes and by supporting that organisation, more good outcomes are gonna come for the community. It can continue to grow. So we uh, at West Tigers uh, have launched West Tigers in Power. Uh, West Tigers Empower is a school-based program focused on the prevention of domestic violence. So we actually have our NRLW and NRL players go into schools and deliver programs uh, that are measurable, that will help change uh, the generation and, uh, and have a significant impact in our region against um, the prevention of domestic violence. Now, how does that win you football games? The thing for us is that by winning more football games, we're going to have more resources and more connection with our community and be able to sell the message better. So we will actually, in a funny world, reduce domestic violence in Western Sydney if the West Tigers can win more football games. And so it becomes a hand-in-hand uh, sort of situation. And it also means that our players genuinely connect and understand why they're doing this. That it isn't just about their paycheck, isn't just about what their agent's telling them to do, and isn't just about their own personal brand. And for them as a team to come together and go, this club actually stands for something in our region, and this club is going to make a difference. That for us, is how to win fairly in both business and sport. Now that is exactly why I think the world is getting too results focused. I think there's too many people who care too much about the black and white measurable outcomes, but that sort of stuff, adding value to society is what the world is all about. Let me add my two cents worth. I saw Adam Goods at a seminar recently, who's probably one of the most successful Aussie rules footballers ever to play the game and indigenous men as well. He got up at this seminar, he said after his controversy at the Swans where he's being booed for being proud of being an Aboriginal man. He said he didn't want to be one of those blokes who just points out bad behaviour in other people. He wanted to be somebody who holds hands with the people around him and makes his country a better place. That to me is totally is totally immeasurable but that's one of those things that's going to make the world around us a much better place. So let's move on to the third question. In some businesses it seems there are deeply embedded cultures where people have gone too far down the rabbit hole of being ruthless to come back out. So how do people turn things around if they haven't been playing fairly for years? Alex, let's start with you on this one. Can people who played sport dirty do business fairly? Such a good question. And I've got to say, it's a case by case scenario, right? But like if I give an example of, uh, let's use Lance Armstrong, as obviously we all know, (laughs) he played dirty. But look, in business today, he's doing some amazing things. He's an entrepreneur. He's helping other small businesses by investing in their business that are community focused, that are trying to do better in the world. Um, He's just getting amongst the community and bettering himself as a person. So one could say he's playing fairly in business at the moment, but potentially obviously didn't play fair in, in sport, did he? So I think to kind of sum up what I was saying is I think as a as a business person, have a certain set of values that you know are fair and adhere to those values 
and in turn to make sure that you're continuing to promote those values within your organization as well. Reward people. Be aware of when somebody's doing something good, something fair, something better for the world, for the community, and reward that person. So values and rewarding, I think, is being aware of it. Doing that in the business world is how you can play fair in, in business. That's a really cool example, Lance Armstrong. I haven't heard that name for there years. <laughs> Now, Sean, let me ask you about the same thing. At the Central Coast Mariners, you technically won one championship as CEO. I'll give you the second one though, because I reckon that is probably yours as well. What practical policies did you initiate at the club to make sure both office staff and players played fairly in business and sport? Yeah, it's uh, whilst the, the, the Mariners have, have recently hit a, uh, a really good high on field, that took years and years to build and it was really about culture. It was really about every employee really understanding what the club stood for, stood for, what the club was about, and bringing everybody in along for that journey, which then turned into performance. And to, to, to give an example, and, uh, and he's a good friend, and I know he won't uh, mind me sort of talking about it, but uh, we had a notorious player in Jason Cummings. So Jason Cummings um, had, uh, had played in some, uh, you know, Crazy big games. Uh, I think he got a good draw against Liverpool, where he scored two <laughs> two goals uh, back in his in his career. But very colourful character, um, and didn't always do the right thing. Uh, didn't always do the right thing by himself. Didn't always do the right thing by the clubs, and that was there. And so even in the week leading into the grand final, I had some behavioural issues off the field that um, uh, weren't aligned with the club's values. And so it could have very easily been an opportunity for the club to be very public and make a statement. Or in this instance, it was a matter of let's work with the player. This is a genuine person who has made some pretty uh, bad mistakes, but let's work with him and actually you know, think of him first about how we can take him along for a journey for his learning and his reward and his respect back to us. He goes and scores three goals in the grand final you know, in an amazing fashion that was there and he's got a nice tattoo and he covers <laughs> his face and he's a crowd favourite. Uh, but then we wish him well onto, onto his way and we really do hope that there's a, there's a bit of a life learning, learning and a life lesson that's there. But everybody in the club sees how the club handles those situations, sees that we actually care about the individual, even though the individual wasn't aligned with the club's uh, values at the time. And we took that step by step uh, along the way. So that doesn't happen quickly and, and it takes years and years of actually uh, a million different examples to get to that point. Very cool, very cool story. Now, Steve Tolan, as the managing director of a recruitment firm, you've talked about your dealing with a lot of young people. Yep. What practical policies do you guys have in place that helps to push those, uh, those intangible meanings and help make people win fairly in business? I've just got to say, scoring two goals against Liverpool, I'm an Everton fan. So I was quite happy with that, mate. So he sounds like a fantastic player, uh, just to cover that off. But um, it really does, you know, and I do love that example. Um, you can say old school in terms of my my methodology, my kind of values. Um, the key thing, mate, is I always say I lead by example. Um, you will find people have got much better admin skills. I'm terrible with a computer, all these kind of things. So, but what I do is I lead by example. I I know my personality type, I'm a red, you know, I'm assertive, I just want to go, and others have to kind of pull me back and go, whoa, 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 just think about this. But I'm already off, and I'm, I'm proud to lead by the front. So if I ask you to do five meetings, I'll do 10. So all these kind of things, people will observe and look at how you kind of show up every day. Positive mindset is key. If you don't believe you can do it, then your team, you know, is going to be the same. They're going to be fearful. So that's the way that I do it. And the second part of that is, and as you know, I host quarterly events, um, called Change the Game. And we invite other people from even competitors in to come and see what we're doing as a business, to understand, to listen to people in the industry. And questions go, well, why would you invite competitors? Because my vision is bigger than what most people can see. I actually want to disrupt and change the game in the industry. That's why I do it. So what I believe is if we actually lift up the whole industry, then that will provide better service, better value to you know clients and job seekers. So may I hope that answers the question. Answers it perfectly, as per usual. Thank you. I just want to add my two cents on this one. I think winning fairly is so much more important and so much simpler than people realise. At the Sydney Swans AFL Club, they talk about like versus respect, where you don't have to like everybody you play with, but you have to be respectful and, pardon the French, but not be a dickhead. And I think if people live their lives that way, the world would be a much easier place and a lot more business would get done. Now, lastly, I'd like to ask all of our guests to wrap up their messaging and their 
their sentiments with one word to wrap up the actions we just spoke about. One word that's an action that viewers can take away to implement all the things we've just discussed. Let's start with you, Sean. What's your one word to sum up your messages? Yeah, I think my one word is going to be empower. I really mm -hmm. think that it's a strong word. And if you take that opportunity to empower those that are around you, uh, for them to grow, then, uh, then you're in a good place. Very cool. Empower. And Steve, what's your one word? Consistency. Consistency is key. And it's going to pay me for saying it. I'm in the West Tigers. I'm a Manly fan. <laughs> The Panthers at the most are the definition of consistency. Um, they are like, you, you know, you talk about that grand final, it's consistency. Everyone knows their role in the team and stuff. So consistency to me is the key. Very cool. And just on that point, I think the Panthers won that grand final based on exactly what you said, consistency. They didn't drop balls, they didn't miss tackles. They did all the small things well consistently for the whole game. So I totally agree with you. Consistency is a good word. And Alex, what's your one word? Mine is values. Values driven. Set... Uh, values that you live by that that's what you're made up of and and follow those values treat others with those values make sure if you're hiring within your business as well hire by those values so values driven very cool so that's technically two words dash. But <laughs> values dash <laughs> driven I, i've got two words myself so there you I, go. i'm not going to hold it against right. you yeah so my one word which is actually two words is ash barty like the three blokes we've got up here on this panel Ash Barty is someone who just leads by example. She operates with integrity and respect. She works hard and she's good to people and things seem to have gone her way. So I want to thank all of our panellists for your insights and your wisdom and, and your presence here today and dropping so many pearls of wisdom on our audience. Thank you all for watching and thanks again to our wonderful venue, the West Tigers Centre of Excellence. Thanks to our major sponsor, the ARA Group, and here's a bit more about the ARA Group. Every day, we're here for you. We get things off the ground, keeping you connected. We're here keeping you safe and secure. We keep things running smoothly and know the importance of giving back. Every day, we're here. ARA. Here for you. Here for good. Thanks again to all of our sponsors and supporters whose names you've seen running across your screen this entire episode. And a special thanks to our guests, Alex Opacic, Steve Tolan and Sean Millicamp. Thank you all for joining us. Remember you can watch us through YouTube or listen to the podcast on Everyday Greatness or Stronger Than My Excuses. And please share this episode with anybody you think might benefit from watching it. I hope you'll join us next week, where we'll be talking about winning fairly in sport with some people who know all about it firsthand. Olympic gold medalist, former Kookaburra's captain and deputy chef de mission for the Australian team at the Olympic Games in Paris, Mark Knowles. The longest serving and interim Matildas coach, who's sitting right behind the camera right now, which is kind of fanboyish, Tom Samani. And also Nathan Katz from Team Katz is an Olympic athlete, judo coach and keynote speaker. We hope you can join us for that one. But in the meantime, we hope you enjoyed today's show and that we've helped you realise that you can play fairly in business and win. Thank you everyone for joining us and I hope you join us next week. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.